the title of the tonight's program and I thought that I would just start out a little bit uh, by uh, sharing a, some of my own past experience with the research and I got into this immediately almost immediately after I became a Christian I was 24 years old and I started researching and consistently across the board all of the top New Age leaders were saying that they were going to infiltrate the church and destroy Christianity from within. And um, specifically, it, I believe it was Alice Bailey who said that they would do this through a process called overlap. And that is how, when they would bring in um, Christian they would set up Christian authors, but they would bring in occult teachings through those books. And yes. she also said that they would have their people, their adepts and master initiates at the head of all branches of Christianity. And so um, David, uh, David Spangler was another one that talked about this. Um, one of the big books that we saw, I think it came out in the 90s, was Leonard Sweet's Quantum Spirituality. More recently, these are, you know, geared towards Christians. Um, probably, I, Leonard Sweet is more of the emergent uh, for a branch of Christianity. Um, Rick Warren. Rick Warren, uh, His Purpose Driven Life. He, that book was written through that process of overlap. And I did an article years ago, and he had at least 13 uh, mystics and psychics and shamans that he was recommending in that book. So we've seen this kind of evolution of this process play out, and it's evolved into the Hebrew roots movement, the Messianic Judaism. And what I discovered as I was writing my book book is, and I think I sent you, maybe, I think I sent you the website, I don't know if you have that up, but um, I check in with uh, Breaking Israel News a lot, uh, just to see what's going on from their perspective, and I was looking over their website one day, and down at the very bottom of the corner of the website, I clicked on a, a tab about their media, uh, media department, and I was really shocked to discover that um, Israel Media Network, that's the name of their company, owns Breaking Israel News and Israel 365 Media, but they also own, or at least they're connected, they say uh, these are our brands. And they <clears throat> own Elijah List, which is a major prophetic website channel uh, for the New Apostolic Reformation and Christian Breaking News and uh, the conservative media network called The Blaze. I think that might be with Glenn Beck. I'm not too familiar with that. But when I saw that, I was, I was pretty shocked about Breaking Israel News. A lot of the rabbis that they feature on there are professed Kabbalists. And a lot of their prophecies are parallel and identical to some of the prophets that we hear of in 
to Christian media, like um, one one in particular. I'll just go ahead and say it. Go it's ahead. It's Lance, <laughs> Lance Wall now. Oh. And he came out with, um, you know, Trump being Cyrus, and he wasn't the only one. Everybody jumped on that, that bandwagon, and it was uh, a real moneymaker, too, in their um, <clears throat> promotion of their books and stuff. Or the blood moons. That's Those types of prophecies are the exact same prophecies that are coming out from the Kabbalistic rabbis on breaking Israel news. So as a Christian, we have to, you know, we, we need to step back and we need to say, okay, who, what spirit are these men coming from? Because the Bible's very clear. If you don't have the son, you don't have the father. So they kind of, you know, these can't be, these prophecies cannot be from the spirit of God. They are very open now about um, initiating Christians, and not just Christians, but global initiation into the Kabbalah. And in in my book, I think I have a quote right here uh, by Joel David Baxt. He said, well, I must have misplaced it. He, okay, no, sorry, I've got it. Um I wrote the book to show Christians that there is an agenda and there is a very definite plan to initiate Christians into Kabbalah because the Messiah that they are saying is coming will be a Messiah that will teach Kabbalah. It's um, even Isaac Shapira talks about this in his book that when the Messiah comes, he's going to teach a a new Torah is what they call it. And there's four levels of Kabbalah or four levels of understanding the Torah in Kabbalah. And the fourth level is the one that I was really concerned about. And that is called Sod. And that is a Kabbalah practice in it or a term and it means secret. And the whole, the whole system of how, The Kabbalist rabbis and the Talmudic rabbis interpret the Torah is through a system of of what they call pardis, and that means garden. And so through their Kabbalah mysticism, they reason that through this type of uh, mysticism, there's got to be a way back to to paradise. And pardis is an acronym that stands for paradise. So those four levels, as I, as I bring out in the book, are Peshat, Rimez, Drosh, and Sod. And Sod is when you get into the real mystical parts of Kabbalah, uh, like Gematria, and it's um, based in the writings of the Zohar. But again, um, the Hasidic uh, Kabbalistic rabbis say that when their Messiah comes, he will be teaching a level of Kabbalah that has yet been to be tapped into. So I see this as the reason why they are trying so hard to to initiate, especially Christians, into Kabbalah. But we see it in Hollywood. We see it in science, in the field of science. We see it all around us now. And there's a real, like, a hunger for Kabbalah. And they've pretty much planned it this way uh, because I I quote uh, Rabbi Joel David Baxt in the book, and he admits that the, well, he says it just like this. He says, the collective Jewish soul, as well as the world at large, is unknowingly being seeded with kernels of divine knowledge falling from the gates of wisdom above. And he goes on to say that this is uh, the hidden light that will emerge from the supernal Torah. It corresponds to the four digits or the letters of the sacred formula of the yod heh vav heh That's the uh, tetragrammaton name. And I think we're going to probably get into that a little bit. But he says that this will bring about the reunion of the two messiahs, which they call the twin messiahs, 
the resurrection of the sacred serpent, the feast of Leviathan, and the revelation of Metatron. And Metatron is their messiah, or at least that's the, one of the names, the secret names they give him. They may call him uh, the yod heh vav -Hey, or they may call him Yeshua, but Bax quotes uh, um, the guy on Vilna who wrote the Kol Hator. That's one really, um, rel I don't want to, for lack of a better word, say very, very reliable Kabbalistic. Right, so think about this. No one spoke English anywhere in the entire world 2,000 years ago, let alone in the Middle East. If you ask one of the disciples where Jesus was, they would have had no idea who you were talking about. So that could not be the name whereby people can be saved. Are you catching me? Or you're saying no one's been saved for 2,000 years since Yeshua was born. So that can't be the name. Where do we derive the authority to change God's name as it fits us and then have the audacity to say when we believe Yeshua? How many of you believe Yeshua is the Yudhe Bave? I do. And so to say someone who believes in the Yudhe Bave just because they don't know him as Yeshua any more than Abraham and Isaac and Jacob who didn't know Yesh, uh, Yudhe Bave except as El Shaddai, the Jews know the Yudhe Bave. We can't say they're not saved because they don't, a name hasn't revealed, revealed to them, especially a English mistranslated from a Greek mistranslated word. In the Yude Vavhe will all the seed of Israel be justified. Did you read that? Is that from the word of God? Do we believe in the Tanakh? And it says all the seed of Israel is going to be justified in the yud hey vav -Hey. That is the name above all names. So they're all calling him by different names. But it says this is what the yud hey vav -Hey, the king of Israel and his redeemer, the yud hey vav -Hey of hosts says, I'm the first and I'm the last. Beside me there is no God. Okay, in other words, believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are all serving the yud heh regardless of the name they give to him. There's only one first and last. Well, okay, so, it, you know, this is straight out of Kabbalah. At one point, I think he says that it is the, Bilt says it's the Vav is the, the ladder, and he compares it to Jacob's ladder between heaven and earth. Well, no, Jesus. Jesus is the connector. Amen. And I just, I want to just say where we know that, where's he getting this? There's nothing about this in the New Testament. And the only thing about the number six is that it's the number of the Antichrist and it's the number of man. But it's coming straight out of the Kabbalah. And I was just going to read a couple of things, a couple of quotes here. Uh, one is from a commentary by the Gion of Vilna. And the other one is, this is from Kabbalah um, Unveiled by Mathers. I, can't, I don't have his name in front of me, sorry. But, um, okay. Mathers. Yeah, McGregor Mathers. Thank he you. taught Crowley black magic. Yes, yes, he sure was. And he was, I didn't know this till later, he was, um, he was uh, involved with Aleister Crowley. Yes. So he wrote a book called Kabbalah Unveiled. And in his book, he says, he talks about the six and the hexagon. And he says that um, the Zohar states that this is the equilibrium of balance and that man realizes his divine constitution through comprehens comprehension of the universal hexad. So there's your six, the hexad of creation. Man is a microcosm and a copy of, of the paradigm of the universe. He is in his constitution a reflection of the divine nature of the supreme wisdom. The nefesh and the ruach, that's the spirit and the soul of man. 
um, are the two angles at the base of a triangle and that with the apex form a whole or perfect figure. Man becomes holy and divine because he then begins to conform himself to the image or the likeness of the Holy One symbolized by the hexagon or the cube. And in the Tetragrammaton, divine name, um, in the Sephirot tree, they've got a, a way, you've got your traditional Sephirot tree, which would be with the ten Sephirot spheres coming down um, from Insof all the way down to Malkut. But I sent you another image, and I don't know if you've got it up there. It's where they um, have the Sephirot tree in the form of a man. And, yep, I've got um, it showing right now, actually. Okay, so this is written verti vertically, and the Hebrew letters take the form of the Sephirot tree in the image of a man. And so the image is said to represent um, Adam Kadmon. And I think we talked about this in the first interview, but Adam Kadmon is really the first sphere on the Sephirot tree, and all souls are said to come from him. So as you go down, you've got the, the head is the yod, the breast and the arms are the hay, the body is the vav, that's the six, and then the last hay corresponds to the legs of the man. <clears throat> and the letter vav, having the numerical value of six, it corresponds to these six sephira and the six-sided cube. This is the cube of Metatron. So the vav in the middle of the tree, the Sephirot tree, is that connector between heaven and earth. And this is really what Biltz is, is secretly communicating to his audience. But tonight, have we got something exciting. We have the next letter, and it is... And I want all of you to know, I love Vav, and you will love the letter Vav too after tonight. Believe me, believe me, you will. Vav has the numeric value of the number six, because it's the sixth Hebrew letter. So like Roman numerals, you know, they were letters with numbers. Well, Vav has the numeric value of six. It's a number that denotes physical completion, okay? Just as the physical world was completed in six days, a self-contained object has six directions, okay? You've got like forward and backward and east and west and up and down, right? Just like in a cube. Vav is the symbol for completion, redemption, and transformation. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here we have the letter Vav. And as we said, the Vav is the number six, and Vav also represents mankind, okay? Why? Well, we know that man was created on the sixth day. So it represents the letter Vav, okay? It represents man. I could not hear the audio, but I can go ahead and... I know what he's saying. I've got some notes in front of me. I know that he says that the Vav has the numerical value of six. Um, he said is is the the connection between heaven and earth. Um, so, and he mentions that he I think he says just like the cube. The Vav is just like the cube, and it is the completion. It is the symbol for completion, redemption, and transformation. Okay, so in the uh, Kabbalah, specifically the Zohar, they say that man is uh, has a divine is is the divine image of God. Now, in Christianity, we bec we are transformed to our faith, but in Kabbalah man is already in that perfected divine image and on the Sephirot tree in the middle is Metatron's cube 
and it has six sides, just like Mark Belts describes, up, down, left, right, or north, south, east, west, above, and below. And this is made up of the six sephirod just above the Malkut. So, and if you were to put those together in an image, you would see a perfect cube there. And you would also see the hexagon. And I don't know if you showed on that video clip the hexagon imagery that it started out with. It's from a commentary on the Gion of Vilna. And it, it's very interesting that in Isaac Shapir's book, he has an appendix of rabbis in the back of his book. And he's got 70 rabbis listed in there. One of them is Rabbi Sh uh, Shual, or Shaul, the Apostle Paul. But there's a list of 70 rabbis in there, and most of them were Kabbalists. And the guy on the Vilna is one of them. And this is uh, this will tell you, this will really parallel this quote to what Mark Biltz was just talking about. We do know that the number six represents the physical world. The Torah describes the creation of the universe as a six-part, six-day process. Our ancient sources describe the universe as emanating in six directions, north, south, east, west, up, down. And we heard Mark Biltz uh, say that in that clip, I believe. All physical space and all physical objects have these six dimensions. 666 is six repeated three times. Repeating a concept three times represents the affirmation and strength of that concept. This work gets interesting. The number 666 could thus represent the strength and perfection of the physical world which teaches which, excuse me, which Judaism teaches will occur in the Messianic era. Whoa. Yeah. So this is a quote in my book, and I also show in my book from their literature, from the Zohar and other Kabbalistic and Talmudic writings that they have inserted, they have taken, our ultimate enemy is Satan, we know that, but Satan has inspired them uh, to he is their God. Lucifer is their God. And through his influence, they have taken the word of God. They've taken the names of God, like the Tetragrammaton. They've corrupted it. They've inserted the Vav yes. in that name with the six. They've inserted the six and the 666 into the very first verse of Genesis. And they have inserted it into the Shema prayer. Okay, that is the prayer. I believe it's from Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And if, say, if the Kabbalists have their way, there's only going to be their one God in this Messianic era. And I know that in another video clip um, that we have on Mark Biltz, he says... He quotes, I think it's Zephaniah, in that day, the yod heh vav -Heh alone shall be exalted. Okay, well, I want to just say to any of their listeners that are probably listening, you know, the book of Hebrews tells us that, yes, in the times of old, in the Old Testament, in, in the past, God spoke to us through the prophets, through Moses, but in these days, he has revealed all things to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And that is the name. That's the name above all names. We've got another clip to play, but um, yeah, this they, they have corrupted the word of God. And it's even in the Shema prayer, the 666 is connected to that. And I show this in my book as well. But now through Messiah Yeshua, and yes, through Messiah Yeshua, you were brought near near. 
seid ihr nahe gebracht worden. That is terrific news for everybody in the room. Das ist eine großartige Neuigkeit für alle, die hier in diesem Raum That sind. Yeshua opened the door. Dass Yeshua diese Tür geöffnet hat. But why did he open the door for the Gentiles? For what? Aber warum hat er die Tür geöffnet hey, two für die Heiden? Two of us are excited. Warum? Two of us are excited. <laughs> Zwei von uns sind wenigstens da. Oh, 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 oh. Why Yeshua? Aber warum Yeshua? Just so the bunch of Gentiles can say we are saved? Nur um uh, ein Haufen Heiden, dass die sagen können, wir sind gerettet? No. Nein. He opened the door. Er öffnete die Tür. That you will be able to come on in. Dass ihr auch reinkommen könnt. And establish the house of Israel. Und dieses Haus Israel mitbauen könnt. He opened the back door for the nations. Er hat die Hintertür geöffnet für die so Nationen. So that they will establish a kingdom. So dass sie mithelfen, das Reich so Gottes aufzubauen. So that the king will be restored in the house of Israel. So dass er wiederhergestellt wird im Haus Israel. Are you following what I'm telling you? Folgt ihr mir? Yeshua, you owe Yeshua. You know, you know all the Jewish people. We, 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 uh, uh, to you owe, you owe, yeah. you have yeah. debt to pay. We, we, are, we are the Jewish people etwas schuldig. And the debt to pay for Messiah is great. And and this this debt to pay for Messiah is great. Not because he Messias saves you. Not because he saves you. Not because he because he had a purpose for you. Weil er hat eine, eine, eine Grund, dass he du had bist. a purpose for the church for 2,000 years. Er hat eine Aufgabe für die Gemeinde seit 2,000 Jahren. That is not fulfilled. Und diese Aufgabe ist noch nicht And how do I know that the church has not fulfilled its calling? Und wieso weiß ich, dass die Kirche diesen Ruf noch nicht erfüllt hat? Let me ask you a question. Ich möchte euch eine Frage stellen. Did Yeshua return? Ist Yeshua schon zurück? Has he come back? Is there schon gekommen? No. No. That means that we have not done our job. Das bedeutet, wir haben unsere Arbeit nicht gemacht. Perhaps maybe we build our own kingdom. Vielleicht da haben wir unser eigenes Reich gebaut. And God has given a very specific game plan. Aber Gott gibt uns einen sehr spezifischen Plan. How many of you want to establish the right kingdom? Wie viele von euch möchten das richtige Reich etablieren und bauen? Here you go. By the way, yeah, the kingdom is not for you. The kingdom is not for you. Das Reich Gottes ist nicht für euch. I know it's going to sound offensive. Ich weiß, das tönt jetzt ein bisschen uh, provokativ. The kingdom is for the Jewish people. Das Reich Gottes ist für das jüdische Volk. <gasps> I am less than the Jews. Well, we need to test what Yeshua they are talking about. Um, there was a book that came out a few years back. Um, called, and I never read it, uh, a friend of mine actually uh, had a copy and she didn't know, She, I mean she was looking, she saw it advertised on some program, but it's the rabbi who found Messiah and it was the book by Carl Gallup's about Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri that I think he passed away uh, maybe sometime in 2013 and he left a, a a name in a sealed envelope. Did you hear about that? And the no. name was Yeshua? Okay. Well, Carl Gallops wrote this book and this Rabbi Kaduri, there was a big, big uh, controversy about this. Um, this Rabbi who lived in Israel, he was over a hundred years old when he died and he left a, a sealed letter and he said that he had met the Messiah but that the letter was not to be opened until a year after his passing and when they opened the letter the name that they found was Yahushua or Yeshua, okay? Um, the Word of God tells us to test the spirits. Now, if if someone in your church or your pastor or someone you're listening to on Christian media is talking about Yeshua, you need to bring this back to the to the Word of God and make sure it's the Yeshua of the Bible, the Son of God. Because I just want to read a couple of things out of this book. 
a lot of Christians bought this book and they were so thrilled that this rabbi had met the Messiah. Well, this rabbi was the master Kabbalist of Israel. It says here that his tombstone said head elder of the Kabbalists, head and elder of the Kabbalists. And there again, the one, one way that we can test this Yeshua name that's going around is, is this Yeshua that they're talking about connected with the Vav? And the one in this book is. Because the uh, Rabbi Kaduri said that there was a soul in Israel that had attained the Vav. And I'm just going to read a quote here. Um, again, Rabbi Kaduri, he, he was a head Kabbalist and he based all of his coming, uh, his calculations for the coming of the Messiah on the Gematria of the guy on Vilna and his date setting through Gematria. And so we saw that the guy on Vilna worked extensively with six and 666. So Carl Gallup's, this is from actually an article within the book, but it says here, um, they explain that the above mentioned attaching of a righteous soul to a person of Israel makes the recipient a candidate for the Mashiach or the Messiah, but not yet the actual Mashiach. This person will get an additional soul which finds expression in the adding of a letter to his name without changing its pronunciation. The elder Rabbi Kaduri said that the letter added to this person's name is the Vav and the secret of his power is the Star of David hidden in his attire. Whoa. Okay, so Mr. Shapira has several teachings out there in the, on the internet, and he talks about this, that, that when the Messiah comes, he said the same thing, he will add the letter Vav to his name. Wow. And that's, yeah. <laughs> so which Yeshua, and even which Jesus, because Paul warns us, another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. And we have to test these things. And don't just believe everything that comes down the, down the pike by these guys. It, it, do your investigation. God's given us all a mind. And um, what's really bad, like in the charismatic and the, and the NAR movements and some of these other churches, is the, uh, the mystical experiences. We are, to, we are to test everything with our a sober mind and to be diligent and to be in the world and find out which Yeshua, which Jesus they're talking about. And look what he's saying in Luke 17 to us. Und da schaut euch an, was, es, was steht in Lukas 17. Now, when Yeshua was asked by the Pharisees, als er aber von den Pharisäern gefragt wurde, when the kingdom of God would come, Wann das Reich komme, stop there. Und das, da halten wir mal. Who Yeshua speak to about the kingdom of God? Mit wem redet Yeshua hier über das Königreich Gottes? The Pharisees. Mit den Pharisäern. Wait, 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 those are the bad guys. Das sind doch die schlechten. Wart, wart, wart. Das sind Please doch die schlechten. understand that the message of the kingdom of God is the most Jewish message. Bitte versteht, dass diese Botschaft des Königreiches Gottes die jüdischste Botschaft überhaupt ist. Make a shift from the salvation message to the kingdom message. We've had, we've had a little... Uh you know, flack <laughs> coming back at us, um, people that I've done interviews with and we've been called anti-Semitic and um, that I, you know, Mr. Shapira says, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, oh, one, one thing that he said, he said, you know, he denied, he, of course, he's going to deny uh, teaching Kabbalah. Uh, David, you and I spoke about this. Oh, they yeah. They will say that they deny it, that they deny and say that they don't teach it, 
but they only present it and then they'll go right back into teaching it. That's exactly but, what they do. Yeah. One of the things that uh, he did say, and, I, and I'm not trying to defend myself here, um, but he, he said I didn't know what I was talking about. Well, I want to say for all, first of all, I just want to encourage anyone who's all the people who are listening. When God calls you, really what you do, all you need is him. You need Amen. The, the Holy Spirit as your teacher. This is the new covenant that God spoke of. I think in Jeremiah 31, I'll put a, give them a new covenant where I'll put my word in their hearts. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the word of God and you need Jesus. And that's all you need. But whatever God calls you to do, he will equip you. He used uh, 11 Amen. disciples to turn the world upside down. But I did want to make a point here because Mr. Shapira has said this several times. Um, he said he denied uh, that he taught Kabbalah. And he said that the Zohar has nothing to do with Kabbalah. Oh, <laughs> That could be yeah. the biggest porky of all time. <laughs> I know, I know. They, he, and Mark Biltz were upset at an interview that I did, and and they made a rebuttal video, which you know it's to be expected. But I did go back into my book, and I, I quote him here on page sixteen of my book. He says, um, "The main contributor." The main contributor to what later became known as the Book of the Zohar, Rabbi Shimon ben Yohar, Bar Yohai, introduced Midrash and Sod, or secrets, to bring a unique perspective and Jewish understanding to the concept of the Messiah. Kabbalah is a generic term for the Torah of Sod, or secrets, which includes the Zohar, among other sources. So he does, this is on page 31 of his book that I'm quoting him, where he does say that the Zohar is included in Kabbalah. Kabbalah is like the umbrella of all the mystical books in Judaism. And the Zohar is the main book. Absolutely. And so, yeah, on the Chabad website, if uh, I've got it pulled up here, um, oh wow, I think I just lost that. Oh, here it is. I don't know how that happened. I'm back to it. Okay, the Chabad.org website says that the Zohar is the classic text of Kabbalah. And it is the most famous text of Kabbalah. So I just wanted to clarify that. But he says it. He says it again in this video. He says, I will say it again and again and again. The church will be destroyed as an entity. And those who are left will be the remnant. And they will become the builders of the house of Israel. Okay. This is radical. Uh, War. I mean, this is violent talk. And I, I quote a rabbi uh, named Michael Higger in my book. Mr. Shapira is teaching the this. He's teaching the exact same thing as Michael Higger. Yeah. And he is the author of the Jewish Utopia. And Michael Higger said to understand the rabbinic conception of the kingdom. And it's, a, it's an earthly kingdom. You know, we know Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. And Jesus' kingdom never clashed with the kingdoms of this world. But Michael Higger was a radical uh, utopian kingdom, visionary, Talmudist, Kabbalist. And he said to imagine this kingdom, uh, imagine a hand passing from land to land, country to country, you know, from the oceans to the seas and marking righteous or wicked on the forehead of every inhabitant of the planet. And then we should be on the right path to solving all of our problems. And he, he says that there will be no, no people in that kingdom who, do, who believe in any kind of division of the Godhead, the Trinity, He's talking about Jesus, it, those who do not stand with the physical kingdom of Israel will 
be destroyed. And this is the same thing, Shapira. This is what we would expect this from rabbis. And, you know, we're not going to make a fuss. We're going to pray for them and we're going to, hopefully, if God gives us an opportunity, witness to them about the gospel message of salvation. But when people like this come into the church claiming to be believers in the same God that we believe in, I mean, I, what I just had to do something. What got my attention with Mr. Shapiro, I think I shared this before in the other interview, was his statement. And I don't know if you played it, but it was in this video where when Yeshua returns, the church will be destroyed. So we're, we're, none of us are saved. None of us should have the joy of the Lord. We shouldn't be happy, and we're not going to be so until we all run over and and help rebuild the third temple so we can start doing animal sacrifices again because he talks about this. It's along the same lines. It's in a video entitled Message to the Church for the Last Days. He says that the new covenant has not been fulfilled. That is the most heretical thing I've ever heard a professed minister of the gospel say. The new covenant has not been fulfilled, and it will only be fulfilled when Yeshua returns. And then he says, so no one, in this video, he says, so no one in the room should be very excited and say, I'm saved. Because covenant is not done with the individual. Covenant is with the corporate. And this is the kingdom he's talking about.